The name of the game when it comes to professional wrestling is it's a business, period. It doesn't matter what you think, that's the reality. At the end of the day, it is a business, which means it's about making money, which means it's about growing and expanding and making as much money as you possibly can. Like for those of you that will selfishly look and say, oh, it's about more than that. No, it's not. And that's part of the problem is wrestling in a lot of ways, the business has lost the plot, which is the business aspect. If you look at, let's say, AEW, and you said they stopped doing some of the flippy, kicky, floppy, no-selly, false finish crap, and some of you didn't like the matches quite as much, but as a result, they focus more on characters and storytelling elements, and all of a sudden they went from a million or 1.1 million viewers every week to 1.8 or 2 million viewers as a result. Like, if you weren't aligned with that, then the problem is not AEW, the problem is you. Because... It's about getting more eyeballs on the product. It's about getting more chances to get more revenue, to make more money, which you would think is the end game. You want the company that you support to make more money. You want the wrestlers, the talent that you claim that you care about to make more money. That is the whole name of the game. So when you see a WWE go out there and say, hey, we're trying to be a part of this Rolling Loud Festival, it makes perfect sense sense it absolutely does and if you were in a position of power within a wrestling company and you weren't trying to get yourself featured there in some way shape or form then you are missing the plot because again the name of the game is to try and get more eyeballs on your product more eyeballs on the product means more potential fans that you can generate which means more potential opportunities to sell tickets to sell Peacock to sell merchandise, all of these other things that feed into your bottom line. It absolutely is the right call and the sensible call from a business standpoint, especially if you're trying to be big, and you're trying to do the best you can, and you're trying to make as much money as possible to find ways to get into new avenues, to get new eyeballs. Like that is the name of the game. Business, make money. So anybody that criticizes WWE or any other wrestling company for trying to be a part of a big musical festival like a Rolling Loud is crazy, in my opinion. Because what the hell is wrong with you? You're missing the whole plot. You're missing the whole point here. And especially for a company like WWE that has lost momentum, that is, you know, hemorrhaging viewers in some respects, you need to get old eyeballs in front of your product again, you need to get new eyeballs in front of your product. You have to go out there and basically be attention whores. That's okay. You've got to go out there and try to get the attention. The problem is, a lot of times you only have one chance to make a first impression. So when you get these opportunities, it's one thing to have the opportunity, it's another thing to take that opportunity, execute, maximize on it. And the WWE, in my opinion, Friday night, significantly failed in this way. They absolutely did. You're going to this festival, and as your woman's champion is wrestling a match, you've got the fans charting, chanting, we want Cardi, we want Cardi. That's not good. I get the premise, the concept of wanting to have a presence there. That's good. I get and understand the premise and concept of wanting to showcase one of your featured players, one of what you perceive to be your bigger stars, one of those ones that could be very appealing to a larger fan base, a mainstream fan base like a Bianca Belair. Again, I get all of that. But you also have to give reasons for people to give a shit, especially if they're not plugged into your product, especially if they're not tuned into your product, especially if they don't know your product from a hole in the ground, or in cases for a lot of those people that are there, whether they want to admit it or not, they've been plugged into the past, but they're not really now. You have to give reasons for people to care. You have to give reasons for people to be emotionally invested. And I'm sorry, trotting out Somebody like a Big E, somebody like a Chad Gable, somebody like a Bianca Belair and Carmelo match 
ain't getting the damn job done. You can sit there and accomplish way more by more intelligently leveraging some of the big name veterans of the past and sprinkling in some of the new guys of the present and now. The bottom line is, the WWE had an opportunity here, in my opinion, they dramatically screwed the pooch on it. If anything, they pissed off a lot of the people that were there, hence the chance that they were doing, because they didn't want to see this shit. Now, when you look at the current state of SmackDown, you have guys like John Cena. You have guys like Edge. You have guys like Rey Mysterio that are featured names from much bigger and more popular eras of wrestling. You have John Cena, who literally is the number one villain in the new Fast 9 movie. So even if you take the wrestling shit aside, there's probably a good number of the people at that Rolling Loud event that have seen Fast 9. Therefore, they know who in the bluest of blue fucks John Cena is, whether we like it or not. That's the reality. So imagine if you bring in a John Cena that most of these people are going to know and recognize and then you have Roman Reigns come and the two of them face off or you bring in it up Paul Heyman and him and Cena face off and then here comes Roman. Now you're sitting there and leveraging one of the bigger names of the past and one of the more relevant names from a mainstream perspective that you have to shine a light on your fucking top legit ass dude that a lot of dudes are going to be like, you know what? He looks badass and serious. That a lot of women are going to be like, oh, missionary John, I don't care. That means Roman likes a cowboy and doggy style. Ah! And they're going to fap all the way home from Rolling Loud. That's how you do it. Or you have Edge come out against a name that a lot of these people are actually going to know. And all this crap that you did with Edge and Seth Rollins in Cleveland, you do that at Rolling Loud. You have Rey Mysterio come out. Again, a lot of people are going to know about this. You want to sit there and really make a fucking impression. You have Triple H in the back. Bring him out and what other relics of DX that you can muster. People are going to know who the fuck that is. This, if you want to do anything, is a segment of time where you pay money, bring in Stone Cold Steve Austin. I promise you people would react at Rolling Loud if a Stone Cold Steve Austin came out. You really want to go for the big balls here. You bring in the fucking rock and you say, well, what the hell's the point? It doesn't matter what the hell's the point. The point is, though, is that it's one thing to get that opportunity. It is another thing to utilize it well, to make the most out of it, to maximize upon it. Like instead of doing this shit with Bianca and Carmella, you could have potentially had Sasha Banks return here. Some people would recognize her from The Mandalorian. Or if you want to go bigger, again, you associate names from the past with names of the present. Just have Trish Stratus come out and you're going to be like, well, what's the point? Her and Lita. It doesn't fucking matter. Have them put over Bianca on the freaking mic like a million bucks. Instead of just doing the lame-ass matches and putting people in the wrong spots, like you could have done some crazy shit. Imagine if you have Baron Corbin show up and beg people in the crowd for damn money. Like if you're going to do it, damn it, do it and go all the way. It was a real opportunity for them to really show off what they could be. Like you could have had a segment with Cena and Roman and then out comes Big E to say, hey, I've got this briefcase. And if you want to say, well, that's nice. You could have sat there and brought out fucking Bobby Lashley. You say, well, he's the Raw champion. Who gives a shit? It's this impressive ass black man who's the world champion. Some of them fans there are going to be like, that motherfucker's legit. I know who the hell Lashley is. I mean, the astounding stupidity to me of getting the ability to appear at Rolling Loud and instead of featuring your biggest, your best, your brightest stars, brightest names, you go with the B and C team. No wonder you're going to get a B, C bounce, a B or C level response to it. Now maybe some of the fans are still been charting, we want Cardi, we want Cardi, whatever the hell. You bring out the right people and you feature them in the right way 
those people are going to care because you can't pretend that absolutely none of those folks are wrestling fans now or at some point in time in the past. Many of them have been. When you think about the sheer number of millions of people in this country that grew up watching wrestling, that used to watch wrestling, that no, lo no longer do, it is millions upon millions of people. The point is, you're trying to get some of those return customers. Go get those return customers back. Give them a reason to care. Give them a reason to say, my God, I don't know about everything else, but that is interesting. He is interesting. She is interesting. I want to see her. I want to see him. And they didn't fucking do that. It's like the WWE in, in specific, old Vince McMahon thinks, you're just going to sprinkle some magic Titan Tower pixie dust on everything and say, we go there, it's automatically a big fucking deal. It's not. If anything, when you don't give the people any reason to really get invested and care about the things that you're trying to do, you end up being an annoyance and getting the wrong type of damn reaction. A reaction is better than no reaction, but you could largely say a lot of them people just didn't give a fuck. It wasn't that you would even piss them off. It's just they didn't give a fuck. I mean, it's bad enough. When you can't even control your own crowds at your shows to the point where they've been hijacking your shit for years, now you go to fucking Rolling Loud and they're basically doing the same damn thing! I mean, it's just an indictment on how off the decision making, the strategy, the execution is for WWE. This is something that in the past they would have pounced on. They would have capitalized on they would have made the most out of and gotten some new fans out of it as a result. Instead, it was yet another opportunity blown and an opportunity wasted. And just another reminder of you're not dealing with the Vince McMahon of old anymore. You're just dealing with old Vince McMahon.